Welcome to another installment of TSI's real-time product training videos. Today we're going to go over a second in a series of mask integrity test accessory for the port account, the Meta uh, product training video on conducting self-checks. I'm Greg Olson, the Global Product Manager for the Health and Safety Instruments at TSI. And I'm John Morton, an Application Specialist for the Health and Safety Products at TSI. And as Greg said, we're going to go through the self-check procedures. I would note at this point that the self-check procedures we're going to go through are for a CBRN mask. Note that if you're going to be testing an APR, air purifying respirator, or an SCBA, uh, some of these self-check uh, tests are not going to be required. All right, and getting started. First thing we need to do is just scroll down to self-check and we can press enter to continue. Now it's going to display uh, some pressure settings right now and then it's going to move on to the self-check procedures. At this point I want to note that at the bottom of the screen we see instructions and descriptions of what we need to do during this entire process. So the meet of screen instructions are actually going to walk us through this. So let's follow those now. The important takeaway here is that the on-screen instructions from the META mimic what's in the operations manual. So you can actually teach yourself simply as you use the instrument. It's also always good to have the manual handy just in case you want some clarification if, if something seems out of place or you're looking at doing some troubleshooting. Uh, and as you mentioned that, Greg, I'll mention this as well. The Meta includes a self-check components guide. Now this has pictures and names of all the fixtures that are needed for the self-check process. Quick reference. Really a nice key to identify all the parts. So the first test here is going to be the drink tube restriction calibration. So we need to connect the drink tube adapter to the end of the drink tube sample hose. Now this drink tube adapter is not included with the META general components. It's included with the META mask adapter kits. So keep in mind that the META mask adapter kits are going to be specific to the mask that you're testing. So we've got the drink tube adapter connected. We can press enter. And it's going to run through its test. It's going to give us an indication if it passed or not. We see it did pass, plus the indicator light uh, lit up. Now we need to move on to DP1, DP3 compare. So in this case, we're going to remove the drink tube adapter and we're going to remove the drink tube sample hose and we're going to connect the drink tube exhalation valve bypass hose. Orange to orange, yellow to yellow. Press enter to continue. It's now going to set the vacuum pressure. That test passed as well. Now we can remove the drink tube EV bypass hose, and again, the instructions are updating as we go along. And we're going to reinstall the drink tube adapter, or the drink tube sample hose, and we're going to install the exhalation valve sample hose. Again, this is a component that's not included with the META, it's included with the META mask adapter kits, specific to the masks. And there are several variations of this, so it's very important that when you're looking at the type of mask you're testing, that you call out the right adapter kit to purchase. And each META mask adapter kit does include a set of instructions which comes with pictures depicting each of the components necessary and where they're to be installed on the mask. So he's got this connected. We press enter to receive the next instructions. We need to unscrew that HEPA filter cartridge located near the back left of the META. And we're going to screw in this uh, mask filter plug. Press enter to continue. Now we're going to need to remove the aerosol mixer and insert the number one rubber stopper. The number one rubber stopper has a hole down the middle of it. Plug securely into there. Now we're going to need to take the drink tube sample hose and plug that into that number one rubber stop. Okay. 
Now I'm going to have Greg uh, place the head form on the meter. Remember when installing this to make sure that you get the line on the meetup head form below the bracket, below the top of the bracket to ensure that it's engaged. And now we need to take the number three rubber stopper and connect that into the lower mask inlet and press firmly, just like Greg is doing here. Press enter to continue. Now we want to remove the mask sample hose from the head form. This is the, the mask sample hose going to the port account. And instead, we're going to plug in the mask sample port plug. Once that's in place, we press enter to continue. The meter will now start this test. And this test passed as well with a green light. Now we need to remove the uh, mask filter plug and reinstall the HEPA filter cartridge. At this point, the test we just conducted sealed off all of the inlet points to the system. We plugged those and we were checking for negative pressure integrity, a leak test, if you will. Okay. Press enter to continue. Now we need to remove all the rubber stoppers that we had installed during the last test. And we can remove the rubber stopper from the end of the drink tube sample hose as well. We need to reinstall the aerosol mixer. Now we're going to remove the head form mask sample port plug and we're going to reconnect the uh, mask sample hose from the port account. Clear tube onto the head form sample port. Press enter to receive the next set of instructions. Now we're going to be starting our drink tube zero leak test. So we want to plug the drink tube sample hose into the drink tube zero leak test fixture. Now notice that the drink tube zero leak test fixture is the same thing as the head form mask sample port plug. So it's the same device, two different functions. Press enter to continue. It's going to set the vacuum. Make sure we have no leaks in this drink tube sample hose. That test passed as well. Excellent. Okay, so we can remove the drink tube uh, sample port plug here. And now we're going to do an exhalation valve leak zero test. So we need to make sure that the exhalation valve sample hose and adapter is attached, which it is. And we need to attach the exhalation valve zero check fixture, uh, which again is something that comes with your mask adapter kits. Now, to go and engage this, what you do is simply push these two pieces together, put the little puck on the bottom and press up, push up, and then simply let it go, engage this onto the bottom and just make sure that it's centered. All right? All right, so now we're going to go and start this test. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, press enter to continue. And that test passed as well. So we can remove the exhalation valve uh, zero leak test, uh, test fixture. and press enter to continue. Now it's going to make sure that there's no blocks in that exhalation valve line, which we do not, that passed. Now we're moving on to the bladder leak test. Um, we need to just make sure that the head form is installed as it is. We're going to press enter to continue. This is going to inflate the bladder and make sure that it holds pressure. And you will visibly be able to see the bladder inflating. And over a period of what, about 30 seconds, John, it's looking for a leak rate decay, meaning it's indicative of a leak. Um, if none is found, we'll pass this check. We'll be able to move on to the very last test. And I would note that the aerosol generator does turn on for a short time during this test. That's normal operations.
Okay, we passed that test. Now we're going to move on to the protection factor test. So what we need to do here is we need to plug the mask bypass hose into the head form. Here's the mask bypass hose. Yep. You notice that the mask bypass hose is really a U-tube with one longer end and a shorter end. The shorter end goes up top, the longer end goes on the bottom. You simply insert both of those to the point that you can't push it in anymore. And we're set, ready to go. And then we need to cover the head form with the hood. Now, when you take out your hoods, very simply, pull it out like this, turns into a V. There's a little white tab in here. Simply pull out on the white tab, and you will open up your hood. Black piece faces forward, clear pieces face to the side. And, John, let's turn this sideways just to show everybody how we want to place this on the Mita. That the back of the hood does not go over the filter in the back, right here, and we have the aerosol generator inside the mask. Very important to make sure that it's set up that way. We'll press enter to continue. Now it's going to go through the process of generating aerosol inside the hood and stabilizing that concentration. You need to have a minimum of 25,000 particles. So, a couple of things to take in, into consideration here. The higher the particle concentration, the faster the, or shorter the test can be. If you're using a port account 8030 or 8038, it's running at a higher flow than the old 8020 or 8020M. We're running about 350 cc's. Again, the higher flow rate can shorten the test as well. So if you do have multiple port accounts, you may find that the second generation, the older 8020s and 8020Ms, run slower during this self-check than the third generation port accounts, the 8030, 8038. And as it's going through and measuring the ambient concentration, I just want to take some time and reiterate that the self-checks you're seeing here are all of the self-checks that can happen. And this would be indicative of a CBRN mask protocol. If I had selected an APR or SCBA mask protocol, which does not use the drink tube or the exhalation valve, many of these tests would simply be bypassed. Now this test may take several minutes to complete, and we're going to see as it's going along what it's doing each time. That test passed, it's now asking us to remove the hood. and remove the mask bypass hose. Thank you. Press enter to continue. And we see the, uh, what the results were for each of the tests passed. And we get the indicator light that we did pass uh, these tests. And that is the end of the self-checks. One thing to note that this will be logged on the instrument so that with the Meta Communicator software, this self-check will be date and time stamped when you did it, when it was completed, so that you can validate any of the mask integrity tests that you conduct during that day's work period. All right? This is Greg Olson. This is John Morton. We're signing off from the second of the Meta real-time product training videos. Thank you for joining us today.